Hello and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. I sit them down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and tempt you <laughs> with a cash offer on the table today. I think 150 is a very fair offer. Make 170. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to tell you to reject that and gamble and go to auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money there. 75, 80. Today the show comes to you from Walsall Town Hall in the Midlands. There's a huge crowd of people. They've been here since early this morning. They are determined to do business. They want to walk away with the real deal. A busy day ahead for our dealers. Let's go straight over to Karen, where local lad Lawson has arrived with his piece of Victorian needlework. The Duke and auctioneer Richard Winterton can spot quality when they see it. Welcome to the show. You Hi, are Lawson. Sewing one of your part-time yes. hobbies, is it? I have to admit it, and <laughs> it's, it's not going to be uh, something I'll live down for a long while. Right, let's get down to this, because yep. we can't really ignore it. I mean, no. it's sitting here looking absolutely stupendous. So, I'm um, family piece? It's my adopted grandparents. I'm actually helping them clear their farm, because um, the farm's been in the family a couple of generations, and. They're now of the age they have, they've got to physically downsize. They asked me if I'd help them sell stuff, but this, unfortunately, is something I have very little uh, knowledge of. Right. From the good point of view, um, it's in amazing condition. It's fantastic. Uh, it's done in Woolworths. We've got the farmhouse here, we've got the church here, and we've got these sheep across the foreground. I mean, it's just so much happening. It's a yeah. real happening sampler. Um, and, and the name of sample is sort of literally what it says. It's, it's a sample of whoever's done this, and in this case it's Elizabeth Agnes Ag Atkinson, and it's a sample of her skill. There usually is so some sort of religious angle to it um, very often, and, it, and it's true in this one. We've got the verse and we've got the church. We've got the name Elizabeth Ag Agnes Atkinson, but we haven't got her age. Yeah which is so important on a sampler. And they usually vary from sort of seven years up to about 12. And I would guess that um, Elizabeth here was probably one of the older ones. And the other big drawback um, is the date, 1883. Now, it's lovely that it's on there in the first place, but it's in the world of samplers, that's actually pretty late. Now, Richard, is this your cup of tea? A large sampler, but admittedly, not a great deal of age. I saw that look coming over your face, that look of slight disdain. Come on, Richard, what do you think about it? OK, personally, it doesn't do a lot for me. I'm a bit more of an uh, earlier sampler okay. man, really. This is really, really late. But beautifully done, you know, we've got to remember it's before, you know, TVs and all, you know, and everything, so it's a big item as well. That's okay. the only, that's, to me, that's the only thing going for it. Where are you going to estimate it, considering okay. its size? I think we ran about that to 2250 sort of thing. I really can't see it getting to okay. the 354, okay. but, yeah. Karen is a good commercial dealer. I'm sure she'll like it, and I'm sure she can flog it as well. Let's see what she puts on the table. I wonder what sort of price you've got in your head. Have you got a price if you've done your research? I wouldn't like to say right now, yeah, that's but a yes, I'm not going to. I'm not going to run off with a tenner. <laughs> that's a yes then. Right, come on then, Lawson. Let's get down to it. Okay. Right, one, two, three, four, five. Is that good so far? It's not a bad start. One twenty, one forty, one sixty, one eighty. One hundred and eighty pounds, Richard. Getting close to your two hundred pounds kind of ceiling or two. 20, what do you think? I think she likes it. I think she wants it, and I think they. I think it's to me. It's it's all the money for the auction. But I think you'll push her a bit more. Okay. Yeah. Mm. You heard what Richard said. He thinks it's all its money. David the Duke says, big, glamorous. I think it's worth a few more quid, and I'm going to persuade our seller to try and get another 20 quid or so from Karen. 
and we've got we've got a stalker, and he's a just stalker. about to arrive. I, I, I feel I feel an amazing presence behind me. Okay, no. Let me give you an indication of what the um, opinions are from our auctioneer and from our independent valuers. They're quite impressed. They're saying 150 to 250, 150 to 180. I think it's worth a few more quid. It's a decent offer, but I think it's worth a reasonable bit more. I'd like to see you get between 200 to 250, somewhere in that region. Thank you. What would you deal on, Lawson? Because I, th I think we've got an understanding. I think you want to sell it and I want to buy it, so I think we're going places here. Yeah, well, if it was two, then I, yeah? I would be happy. OK. Yeah. And do you think that'll keep our David quiet, who's waiting in the rings, I'm trying to ignore him? <laughs> it, it, yes, yeah. Thanks very much. It's been thanks a pleasure having you on nice the show. You. And I absolutely love it. On the day, the real deal is here in cash. £200. A great deal sewn up by Karen there. I'm sure Lawson's grandparents will be chuffed with that price. Over to Tony, where Angela's hoping he's ready to splash the cash. I've brought in this silver pot that came into my possession about ten years ago from right. the church. From a church? Well, it was actually a member of our congregation whose wife had died and I run this summer fair, so he gave me a whole box of things and said, just sell them. Okay. And my husband saw that and he bought it. Well, let's have a look and see what we've got here then. I mean, it's, it's 1930s, Art Deco. I think it's not 20s, I think it's later. It's, I can't quite make out the mark, the maker's mark. Enamel's perfect, which is so important. You've got the typical sunbursts going on there. It's a very saleable object, in very good condition. So I guess we should get down to some money. Yes, that's a good idea. <laughs> well, let's start with 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 pounds. No, I am looking for more than that. Am I close? You're not a mile away, but if you start putting more down, I'll let you know. I'm going to go 120. No, a bit more. I'm going to make it around one and a quarter. I don't like the odd five. Okay, really I'll don't take like that the back odd then. Five. And I'll put the ten. What's Tony offered you? Um, he's offered there £130. Well, the independent valuers are saying 100 to 150, 100 to 130. It's the kind of object you could go to the sale room with, you might get lucky, you might get another 20 or £30, and you might not. And you've got to pay commission. So at this stage, I'm going to say 130 cash, no deductions. It's not a bad price. OK, our deal. Thanks Thank very you, much. You're most welcome. Thank you very it's much. Thank you. We pop across the dealer's den where Jane seems to have found the right deal of her piece of jewellery. Our Ian's never want to turn down a bit of bling. It's a very lovely necklace, set in silver, shell, a snail shell that is set in silver. Original box, I take yes, it. Yes, yes. Uh, how did you get it? My mother-in-law gave it to me. Your mother-in-law? Yes, a good many years ago. It's very lovely. It's just and stuck very in the box. Yeah. I mean, it's a colour that you can use virtually with anything. Yes, it's beautiful. You know. What is important that all the shells are in very good condition. They it aren't is. smashed. They aren't mm. cracked. The silver chain looks in very good condition. Mm. And of course, an advantage to this sort of thing is the box. If it hadn't been boxed, I imagine a lot of that would have been damaged. Yes. It's around 1860, 1880, mm -hmm. probably made in this country, especially for somebody. Is it not difficult for you to make up your mind to get rid of something like that? It's been with me a good many years, and I have not really worn it at all. So it's time for it to be moved on, for someone else to enjoy. So money-wise, it's set in silver, it's in good condition, mm. it has a lovely box. Okay, so let's say we start with 50, 100, 150. Make 170. Make it. <laughs> Another, like a blue one this time. Oh. Not a pink one, I'm not asking for a pink. <laughs> I think 150 is a very fair offer. 
I just ask my friends? You're going to ask your friend? Then? Yes, please. Oh, Lord, this just is going to be a problem. What do you think? I'm <laughs> asked for another 20. I think that would be fair. Maybe a little more. Maybe I'm just a little think, more. <laughs> no, I, I think really because the presentation, the whole thing is beautiful. And I think that. Yeah. <laughs> Talk nicely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is conspiracy. Like two of us. <laughs> conspiracy. <laughs> I think 150 is very good. I do. Now I can see we've got a, a supporter here in the background. Yes. You're asking advice. I think on the day when Ian likes something, he goes for it. He's gone for this one. No hesitation. Normally, I have to <laughs> do that. <laughs> on this occasion, he's put the money down and he wants to buy it. And I'm going to say to you, sell it to him. <laughs> You've heard what David says, you know, and he's very true about it. If I like something, I go for it and I pay for it. You know, I don't hesitate. So. Do we have a deal at £150? I think so. We have a deal at £150. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. I'm really going to have a pleasure enjoying it. I'm so show. glad it's gone to you because I think that you will keep it and look after it. Coming up, an essential intervention from the Duke. David Paul is one of the sharpest, shrewdest dealers I know. <laughs> I heard a penny drop, and I'm sure it was inside his head. <laughs> Has David Ford's cover been blown? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. It's time to pay a visit to David Ford, where some silver screen items have arrived at his table. Lights, camera, action. Do you know, Jeff, this business never ceases to surprise me. I mean, I'm, I'm an antique stealer, but things are collected of all forms, aren't they? Yes. Shapes and sizes. Now, are you a collector of this kind of no. cinema? No. So what's the story? How did you come to own all these? I like, I'm a James Bond film fan. OK. And I went to a jumble sale, and James Bond was on the top of this pile. Yes. And I bought them. And how long ago was that? 20 years. Oh, I see. Oh, quite a while ago. Yeah, yeah. And now you've decided... To sell them. <laughs> but if you collect James Bond things, surely that one's going to be quite hard to part with, isn't it? I know, but I'm getting on and I want a bit of money by me. So it's quite a collection, isn't it? Here I see you've got a fistful of dollars uh, with Clint Eastwood. Biggest name dropper I've ever met, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> yeah, I do. OK, let's get some money out, shall right. we? Got in the jumble 20 years ago. Yep. £40? No. I think it's worth more. I do. Now it's worth more. £50. Jeff, I mean, £50, it's a gesture. Right. I think actually auction might be the better route. I'm out of my. I don't know what these are worth. To, oh, here's David. He'll help us. It's a very difficult lot to value, this. right? Uh, but 50 to 70 is the kind of. Okay. Estimation. Yeah. I read in my notes you paid 50 pence for these. That's things. correct. What, what's, making, what's, <laughs> what's making me scratch my head is have you got arthritis in your arm? <laughs> because I, I'm, surpri <laughs> I'm surprised that the hand hasn't come out and <laughs> struck like a king cobra and got that off the table before David could even blink. So you know what I'm thinking, don't you, at home? I'll leave it up to you. Be careful he doesn't get his hand out quick and take it off the table. Do you mind another fiver? I really don't want to own this. <laughs> I you can't feel more confident you I've are. Made, I've made a gesture. <laughs> the, the funny thing is that my gesture could be foolish because there are people out there, film buffs, who do spend strong money on these kind of things. Yeah. And if those people are at the auction, if they're there, I think yeah. that's the way to go. Yeah. Take if they're a, there. Ha, for yeah. 50 quid, have a gamble, have a bit of fun. Who knows? <laughs> you know what the smile at, don't you? <laughs> David Ford is one of the sharpest, shrewdest dealers I know. <laughs> I heard a penny drop, and I'm sure it was inside his head. It's a question of which hand from which side is going to get to that money first. <laughs> don't take my 50 quid. Go to auction for £50. Have a bit of fun. It's a yeah. great day out. Have you been to an auction? Oh, a long, long while ago. Yeah, have a, a day out. 
and who knows, they may make a bit more money, but you may end up with 40 quid or something. But for, for the experience of going to auction and the fun of it, you might end up with 90. Who knows? OK, we'll go to auction. <laughs> yep. <Jeff. laughs> Seems like the world's not enough for Jeff, and we pay our first visit to the auction. So David Ford offered you 50 quid. Yep. You turned that down? Yeah. Is it going to bring more than 50 quid? Well, the estimate uh, is 60 to 70. Is it going to sell? Well, let's find out. <laughs> we start the bidding at 60 pounds. Straight in at 60, that's the reserve. Swept away. 80 pounds, 90 pounds, 100. Get in there. <laughs> 110. 120 on my book here at 120 commission bid. 120. The room's out now. We are sold. 120 quid. Oh, okay. yes. Okay. <laughs> you heard him. 120 quid. Take away the commission. I reckon you're going home with about 102 quid. Lovely. Lovely. Please. I'm over the moon. Okay. Over the moon. Turned down 50 pounds very wisely. Gamble, came to auction. <laughs> 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 and he's going home with a hundred quid in his pocket. How do they do it? <laughs> that is the real deal. And cut. A satisfied seller means a wrap for this deal. Well done, Jeff. Back to the dealer's den, where the Duke's taken time out with museum curator Helen Statham. Now, Helen, you are the curator of which museum? Um, Bantock House Museum in Wolverhampton. What is the collection all about there? It's a decorative art collection and we have a lot of beautiful English painted enamels which were made locally in Bilston, Wolverhampton, Wensbury and other decorative arts. Now these are just fabulous. So you have this metalware which has been enamelled and been hand decorated. These date from what, about the 1730s? The earliest was 1730, um, up to about the 1770s, uh, I would say. OK, well, let's have a look at them because there's some amazing things here. These little items here, those are patch boxes, I presume. Yes, that's right. Ladies would, I think men as well, perhaps, would have mm -hmm. patches in their box which they would apply to their makeup like a beauty spot. I mean, these are superb quality, aren't they? They are, they're beautiful, yes, they really are. And you can identify them by the mirror inside, of course. That was really for using to apply the little patch yes, on your makeup. Right. What about those two items there? Those two are small bonbonniers, and uh, they would have had little sweet tasting cashews to, to freshen the breath. How rare would you say those are? They're very rare because there was only a very small production period. Um, there are some beautiful examples that have survived, but um, not as many as we would have liked. <laughs> now, that there seems fairly obvious. Is that for needles? Yes, that's right. It's a needle case, and that's a, a, an example of a Bilston enamel. And this one here, would that be a thimble or would it be a nutmeg grater inside? No, that one is a thimble case, but we do have a nutmeg grater in the collection. As you say, gentlemen would have grated nutmeg on their chocolate and coffee in the coffee houses. Those were the days. <laughs> OK, this is fairly obvious, but what do you think at home? This is a desk set, I saw. Yes. In there, you would have had your sand, you'd have taken your <laughs> quill pen, you would have opened and inside, there's no liner in there. There is just the pot with your ink and you will have used your quill pen and then afterwards you would have taken the pot and you would have put your sand to dry on your paper. What about that little thing there? Snuff boxes. Very pretty, but of course ladies took snuff as well in that period Absolutely. quite a lot. So. I, I would suggest that probably was for a lady because of the design, perhaps a little bit feminine for a man to take snuff from. And what about this one? Again, another snuff box. Um, people would have had smaller ones that they carried, but also had larger ones that they kept on their dressing table or in the hall. What attracted you to the museum? You're the curator. How many years have you been there? Um, I've been there 12 years altogether. Do you enjoy the job? I absolutely love it. <laughs> I like to hear that. You know, how nice to go to your job in the morning, to your place of work where you love it. First of all, can visitors come to see this fabulous collection? Oh yes, we're, um, we're open six days a week, every day except Monday. Um, in the summer we're open from 11 till 5 and it's free to come in. Did you hear that? Free. Now that's always nice to hear that you can go to these amazing museums, see these wonderful collections, 
worth many thousands of pounds and you can see them for free. When you look at these fabulous enamels, you do think about Europe and in particular, you think of Limoges in France. They produced wonderful enamels, certainly for their aristocrats and well-to-do people. I suppose in England the same. These will have been produced in the early to mid 18th century for very well-to-do people. I'm going to say to you, forget the Limoges. I think Bilston had the edge on them. Best of British, David. Absolutely stunning craftsmanship. Over to Tony's table where another piece from a well-known British maker has cropped up. And what can you tell us about this jug you've bought in today? It's been passed down through the family and um, we just kept it in the cupboard out the road and we thought we'd come down here and bring it down to see what, see what it's worth. See what it's worth. Oh, Ken, it's a Dalton Lambeth, made in London, around about 1880. You see clearly the mark there and the, um, the artist's signature who's decorated it. It's in the Gothic style, which puts it in the date for 1880. Um, it's in wonderful condition, actually, and it's got a lovely little story on it. You've got the, the monk here sitting down for his dinner, and then um, he's eaten his dinner, or eating it, and then the third one, he's stuffed to the gunnels. And there's a nice little sort of Gothic decoration detail, so we can see these florets, typically from the Gothic Revival period, but it's emulating something from about medieval times that's that's where they're they're getting their their inspiration from for this jug and i'd like to have a go at it 20. no thank you 40 ken no thank you no thank you no thank you 60. no thank you we close Are we getting near i've come to try and help you here a rather nice looking piece of Dalton Lambeth, 30 to 50 pounds is the estimate from the auctioneer and the independent valuers. You have looked after this so well. This has obviously been in a display case. And I can understand how you probably think, is that all for that wonderful piece of Dalton? Sadly, this Lambeth, Dalton Lambeth ware, is not doing brilliantly well at the moment. But I'm going to say to you, Tona's offer of 60 pounds is realistic and fair with the current market. Thank you. So what do you think then, Ken? It's a deal. It's a deal. Great stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Still to come, some home truths from Callum. There's an awful lot it needs doing to this clock. Unfortunately, we've got the two little finials that should be sitting here. They've gone walkies at some yeah, point, haven't some they? Point, yes. Yeah, along with the veneer at the front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not yeah. doing very well so far, are we? No. So... Could Christine's go. time be up in the dealer's den? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from the Town Hall in Walsall. Our dealers are in full swing. Time and tide wait for no man or woman. Christine, lovely to meet you. Nice to meet and you, you bought me a clock today. Right, before I get stuck into it, where's it come from? It was given to my husband by a friend of ours years ago. So did he dabble in clocks? Is that where she oh, gave it to? I dabbled in quite a lot of things, yes. Yeah, in yeah. quite a lot of things. Yes. You say that a bit warily. No, he I does, yes. <laughs> so what happened to the veneer off the front? Yeah, I haven't got a clue, actually. No. no. Right, here we have a mantel clock. Uh, we've got the, the two holes. Single hole is a timepiece. The two holes is a striker. And if we were lucky enough to have another hole, it would be a Westminster chime. Mm -hmm. Walnut cased. These were mass produced in about 1900, slightly before, slightly later. Unfortunately, we've got the two little finials that should be sitting here. Yes. They've gone walkies at some yes. point, haven't Support, they? Yes. Yeah, along with the veneer at the front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not yes. doing very well so far, are we? No. Um, and a quick look in the back should confirm which it does. It's got a German movement. If it had a French movement, we would be getting a bit more excited. Mm -hmm. There's an awful lot it needs doing to this clock. Mm -hmm. Um, it's got a nice silver dial, Roman numerals. Um, it's got a lovely bit of carving on the top here. I mean, it's got things going for it, but it's going to take someone a bit to get it back. I don't know if I'm going to... Oh, I'll put some money down and hopefully I'll tempt you a bit. 10, 20, 30, 40 pounds. 
no. Oh, thank goodness for that. You said no, didn't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what were you looking for, Christy? Uh, I'm telling you. Are you? No. Well, it was obviously a lot more than that, then. Yes. Do you know what? I'm going to stick on that. Yeah. I'm really mean, aren't I? Yes, you are. Sorry, Christy, because no. I know how much you really want to get rid of this clock. <laughs> I can buy them for that money. No. So you're not going to take my offer? No. And what are you going to do? Send to auction. Don't blame you. Well, good luck. Have a lovely day out with David and hope you get rid of it then. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just the one offer from Karen and a clear decision from Christine. The clock is off to auction. No time to waste. Let's join David in the sale room. You brought along on the deal estate a worn mantle clock. Karen knows her antique. She offered you 40 quid. What did you think about that offer? No. <laughs> you turned down 40. Yes. Did Christine do the right thing? I think she did. Let's see what it brings. Uh, 20 pounds I bid, 20 pounds, five, 30, five, 35 pounds I bid, 35, 35, 35, 40, 40 pounds, five, 45, at 45 pounds I bid, 50, at 50 pounds I bid at 50 pounds, at 50 pounds, we have 50 pounds in the room. We're finished. I have a bit of £50 on the book, David. You've got a choice here, very quickly. Do you want to accept the £50? The reserve is 60, otherwise it's take it home. Mm. I'll accept. OK. We'll accept. Thank you very much indeed. My pleasure. Sold £50. Thank you. Christine decided to accept 50 uh, which was a little bit lower than the £60 reserve. Take away the commission, and that is £43. The real deal was here in the sale room, £43. Tick tock. Phew, a close call there, Christine. You just scraped through with an extra £3. Next, a piece of collectible modern porcelain has appeared with Ian. And you are? William. William. Hello. How did you get it? Uh, car boat. So you paid a fortune for it? I'll tell you later. <laughs> You'll tell me later? Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, it's not terribly old. It's fairly modern Copenhagen. Yep. They reproduced it over a period of time. So how old. old is it altogether? Five or, five or six years old. About four years, six years. Six years old. How long ago did you buy it? About four years ago. Yeah. So, you know, I'm going to be gauge my valuing of it on the fact that it is modern. Yeah. So, you're going to hate me for this, but you'll still be making a profit, I'm sure, if you buy, if you let me we'll buy see. it. We'll see. Okay. Well, 20 and 25. That is what it is worth to me. I don't know what you're looking for. Uh, it's, not tw it's not 25. What is it you're looking for? About 50, 60. We have £25 on the table, which sounds very mean. <laughs> it is very mean. It is very mean. Well, the independent value is, say, 30 to 40. The auctioneer is a bit more ambitious. He says 60, 70. I think it's worth a little bit more than 25 quid. What about it? They are so easy to buy now, everywhere. And if it was an earlier piece, I'd gladly pay more for it. That's... At the moment, Copenhagen is absolutely dead. What did you pay for it? Do you need to tell you now? Or? I don't think it matters, because I, I don't think we're going to budge him anyway, so... Five pounds. OK. You know what I think? I'm just a dealer. First profit, best profit. Cost fiver, 25. That'll do for me, pal. Yeah. But you might think differently. It might make a little bit more in auction, but I wouldn't like to guarantee it. First profit, best profit. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard what David had to say. He's given you the... The, de the opinion of the auctioneer, he's giving the opinion of the independent valuer. And I've given you my opinion, which is Could not... Could you go another five? No, I wouldn't go another five. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I'll have the 24 then. You will take it at 25? Yeah, yeah. Can thank we you. shake on it? Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank and you. thank you for bringing it along. And let's hope I can get my 30 quid out of it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. What a result for our seller, William, a 400% profit. Time for a quick trip across the dealer's den, where a barrel of fun awaits David Ford. Hi, Lillian. Hello, David, hi. hello. So what do you know about your biscuit barrel? I knew that it's Shelley. I think that's right. Looks like Shelley. Does it say Shelley on the bottom? Yes. Oh, well, that's good enough, isn't it? It's great style, isn't it? Yes, it is. Lovely. I think it is 20s, 30s, that mm. sort of date. It seems to be perfect. Yes. I'll just pick it up and have a look. Quite right, it says Shelley on the bottom, nice and clear, with a little factory number there. It's a nice style, isn't it? Yeah. And it seems to be in lovely condition, which is good. 
believe it's harmony. The, the, the pattern is harmony. Harmony, is it? Yeah. Oh, well, that's something I didn't know. But it's very clever the way they sort of drizzle the colour down the sides and then fire it. It must be quite an art to yes. get that finish. I think, it's, I think it's quite attractive. You don't want to use it, keep the pickies in it. I'm on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do I want to pay for that? Starting with a £20 note, Lillian, and a £10 note, £30, for your biscuit barrel. A bit mean. Do you think so? Yes. I, I tell you what, I'll give you 40 for it. Here's David, right. he's going to give you some good constructive right. advice. Well, 30 to £40 pounds is the estimation. It's a cracking lot. It has wonderful colour. And of all the biscuit barrels I've seen, yes, I could fancy owning that. It's a nice thing, isn't it, David? David, if I buy it, it's yours for 45. Well, there we are, you see. <laughs> That's the nature of the beast in this game. If I buy for 40, you can have it for 45. <laughs> Either way, I think David would have no trouble in selling that because it's appealing. David makes a fair offer, and yeah. I would say on the day, it's a nice lot, sell it. Mm. OK, then. Deal. It's good when you get good advice. <laughs> yes. Lillian, thank you. We have thank a deal. You. Thank you very much indeed. What are you going to do with the money? I'll give it to the grandchildren. They're, They're going, going on holiday. It. And how many grandchildren are Two. there? Two. How old are they? Three and nine. Well, that sounds lovely. They'll have fun, won't they? £20 yes. goes oh, quite way. a long way when you're only three, doesn't it? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Lovely meeting you, thank you. Thank you. Still to come. You're greedy. So am I. Don't worry about it. <laughs> We're two of a kind. Yes. Has Ian finally met his soulmate? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. As the dealer's day draws to a close, Ian's been presented with one last bit of sparkle. Hi, I'm Ian. Hello, I'm Jean. And you're Jean. Yes. Diamond Solitaire. Yes. Can you tell me, is it being chucked out because it's an ex-diamond affair? <laughs> no, it was my mother's, my late mother's. Why do you want to get rid of your mother's ring? It's just in a box. Just in, in a drawer. box? Yes, You'd I never... don't wear it. You don't wear rings? No. Well, I do wear rings, but I've got enough. You don't wear necklaces? Very rarely. Diamond one? I haven't got any. Not that lucky. <laughs> You'd have to come to my shop. <laughs> Definitely. I'm just going to have a quick look at the ring and see what the diamond says to yes. me. <laughs> it's a pretty good stone. There are a few black marks in it, but for this size of stone, one expects that. You know, it's quite acceptable. It's a ring that is a very pretty engagement type of ring. Easy to sell, yes. not very expensive. It's set in 18 karat gold, which is very nice. You know. She's looked after the ring. It's been sized a couple of times. Yes. But that doesn't matter. It's a size for a young couple who do not have a lot of money and want something that's blingy, shiny, sparkly. It's in a price range for the younger generation to buy. So that is what I will gauge my pricing on this ring. Five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more. So, 50. 100. 150. 200. 250. Does it sound enough? No. No? Well, please. You're greedy. More? You're greedy? So am I. Don't worry about it. <laughs> We're two of a kind. Yes. I wouldn't think it's worth more than 300 to me. What did you have in mind? About five. I think it would be hard pushed for five. Say I go 350 and here comes trouble. <laughs> hey, you see, did you hear that? Here comes trouble. I'm going to tell you what other people think about this diamond ring. The independent valuers, some of them are gemologists, and they say five to six hundred. And the auctioneer is being a little bit more conservative. He's saying 500 to 550. Now, bear in mind, in fairness, there is a deduction of 15%. Yes. So if we got the very top estimate, we would have to take roughly nearly 100 pounds off and bring it back to five. I'm leaving you with Mr. Diamonds, <laughs> who probably wants to acquire another diamond, but perhaps a little bit on the cheap side. So yes. we have to get... <laughs> Firm with him. You know what to do, Jean. 
it is a very saleable size of ring. Yes. But what they have failed to tell David is that the stone is marked. Okay, it has inclusions in it. If David is not aware of the fact that it has got inclusions in it, yes. then he doesn't know the real value of the stone. I might give you another 50, but that's not going to please you. So there's no point in me even Would you give me another 50 for it? <laughs> yes, I mean, if you will. one, two, three, 350, there's 400. But I would not pay more than that. You know, I think 400 is the top whack. OK, you've heard what our dealer's got to say. Yes. Now, that is his opinion. What you've got yes. to say to yourself is, is he right? Should I take his £400? Or are the independent values? Is the auctioneer right? And should I take a gamble? So that's where the nature of this game is. Yes. I'm going to say to Ian, get another 25 quid in, and I think you could tip the scales. You've still got to sell it. You've still got to make a profit. But I'm trying to stop gene going to the auction but at the same time doing my job and that's getting the best price for the public <laughs> we've got to look after you darling definitely <laughs> but as you said you know give me another 50 which i have done are you happy with that yes i'm very happy with that. you are happy yes, with my offer you. of 400 yes thank you. shall we shake on you thank you very much thank you, yeah. are you going to be sad to see this ring go yes i will it's sitting in a drawer so that's you might right. as well do something with it yes so you might as well take the money and Enjoy make it, it work Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. So Ian's offer keeps Jean away from the auction and it smiles all round. So which of our sellers did best today? And have our dealers been able to turn their spending into profits? Karen's under the spotlight first. Right, thanks a lot. It's been an absolute pleasure and I really love it. Pleased to buy this. She decided the best place for the sampler is in auction. It's yet to go under the gavel, but is confident she could still make a profit on it. And so we move on to Tony, our leading man. It's a, it's a very saleable object, in very good condition. He was right and managed to sell it on for £200. Oh, Ken, it's a Dalton Lambeth, made in London. You see the mark quite clearly there. Tony's decided more research is in order before selling on the Dalton Lambeth jug, so it sat at home in his display cabinet. And Ian's had mixed fortunes with his purchases today. Thank you. I'm really going to have a pleasure enjoying I'm it. I'm so glad it's gone to you, because I think that you will keep this in the factory. Ian has become a little bit too attached to the necklace and the Copenhagen figure as they remain unsold. It's a size for a young couple who, who do not have a lot of money. And Ian easily found a buyer. He sold the ring on to a London dealer for £650. But Jeff is today's star seller. He paid just 50p at a jumble sale 20 years ago for his film posters. Right. OK. With the auction. He turned down £50 and walked away with 102 at auction. Well done, Jeff. <laughs> We've had a great day here in Walsall Town Hall. There's been loads of action, lots of buying and lots of selling, just the way we like it. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.